You can now use streaming and API calls in Flutterflow. So instead of responses coming back in one large chunk, they will be streamed in smaller chunks. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what streaming is and how to use it in your Flutterflow apps. In most API calls, you make the request, say for products, and the server responds with one single chunk of data. And most of the time, that's fine. But sometimes you would rather have that data stream in, not in one big chunk, but in smaller chunks. Okay, but why would you want to do that? Well, streaming data in smaller chunks can be beneficial for two main reasons. First, improved performance. Streaming allows the app to start processing the data as soon as it arrives rather than waiting for the entire payload. This can significantly reduce perceived latency and improve the user experience, especially with large data sets or slower network connections. And second, enhanced user experience. Streaming allows data to be displayed progressively, which means users can start interacting with the content almost immediately rather than waiting for the entire data set to load. By showing data incrementally, users perceive the app to be faster and more responsive. Now, keep in mind that you can only use streaming if the API you're using supports stream, and you'll know if it does by checking their documentation. For instance, in OpenAI's documentation, we've got some example code for streaming, and when we scroll down, we can see a field called stream, and in order to enable it, I have to set that stream to true. Now, this is how streaming is set up with the ChatGPT API, but it'll work differently with different vendors, so check out their documentation. Okay, let me show you how to set this up in Flutterflow. For this demo, I'm gonna use Chat that GPT's streaming feature. So if I come over to my API definitions, now in order to enable this in Flutterflow, come over to advanced settings and you'll see this new option, process streaming response and turn that on. But remember, this is just telling Flutterflow to expect a stream of data. We actually haven't told our API that we want it to stream. And for OpenAI, that means including that stream field in our body. So we can just go down here and at the end of our body, add a field stream and set that equal to true. We're gonna format this, beautiful. Next, let's test this. So let's come on in here. Now I've got my prompt right here, tell me a joke, and let's test it. Now you can tell if the data is streamed in by just scrolling down here, and you can see that we've got a different window for each chunk. And inside here, we've got our content, which will be the actual message response. So we can see here, sure, comma, here's a joke. Okay, great, this is streaming in correctly. Next up, let's set the parsing for this response. Now, if you wanna parse the entire response, just copy it right here and come over to the data types tab and input that right here. I've already done that and it's gonna come out like this. So here's my response with all of the fields and data type and it even creates nested schema. So here I've got this choices, which is set to a data type of choices, which we can see here, and it even goes one deeper. By setting up this schema and then parsing it, it'll make it much easier for us to bind that data and use it in our app. So let's come back to our API definition and we've created that data type. Now we need to tell Flutterflow to parse the response we receive back as that data type. And we do that down here. Now there's something here that you can easily trip up on. So remember this, when you parse this, so let's set it to that data type of response, you are parsing each chunk. It's easy to confuse this as parsing all of these chunks. But what we're doing here is this response, this one right here, that's what's being parsed for each chunk. So you don't wanna select list right here if you're thinking that these chunks are all objects in a list. No, this is parsing for each individual chunk. Okay. This is great, let's save and then set up our UI. So in my UI, I've got a list view with a component that will handle each one of my chats, one from the assistant coming back from OpenAI and one for me, the user. And then we just got our text field right here. Now, when the user submits here, we wanna execute some logic, which is in here. Now, when you use streaming, it's just a normal API call. We've already set up the streaming, so it's just a normal API action. But there will be a few differences. So you can see here that I've selected selected the API endpoint I want, but I have three different callback functions. And pay attention here because this is where I made a mistake the first time I set this up. When those chunks start coming in, you will process them in this on message callback. So if I open it up, you can see I get a whole new action flow here. This is where you'll handle that data. You won't handle it down here, like where you process a normal restful API call. So most of the heavy lifting you're gonna be doing will be done inside here. 
here. Now, before we set up this logic, what are these other two callback functions? Well, as those chunks of data are being streamed in, if there's an error, then this logic will be run in here. Finally, when the stream is closed, that's when this logic will run. Okay, let's jump in here and set up this logic. Now, before we set this up, let me show you about my data model and how I'm handling state management. So let's close this and go into our data types right here. And I've got this message data type. Now, this message data type encompasses a complete message from both the user and ChatGPT. And each one of these messages will consist of an ID identifying that message, a role, which will either be an assistant or a user, a timestamp for when it's created, and finally, the messages themselves. Okay, so this is the data type, and then I've got an app state variable, which is just a list of those messages. Okay, great. Let's look at how we're handling state management. Now, we just have something small and simple here, but I've got one state variable here that's called new message. Now, because we're handling our response in chunks, that means the first chunk is gonna be different from subsequent chunks. And that's because if it's the first chunk, we need to create a whole messages object. Remember, with an ID, and the messages, et cetera. If it's the second or hundredth chunk, well, we're not creating that object. We're just adding that word, the text, into that list of messages. And so we handle that state. We track whether this is a new message or a continuing message through this Boolean new message. Okay, so let's jump in and set up this logic. So let's come in here into our action flow editor, into our API call, and we're processing those chunks in our on message callback. So the first thing we need to know, is this an ongoing message or the first one. So let's add a conditional action and we want that page state variable right there, new message. If it is a new message, then let's just change that variable to false, so page state. and we wanna set that value to false. Okay, finally, we're ready to process this first chunk. So what do we wanna do? Well, we wanna create a new messages object and add that to our list of messages in our app variable. Okay, so we just wanna do an app state variable action. App state, we wanna update app state. We want this one right here, and what do we wanna do? Well, we wanna add to our list, and what is it expecting? Well, it's expecting the data type messages. So we're gonna create a messages object object right here, and I like to click through all of these fields so we can see everything we're dealing with. So we got four fields to deal with right here. We've seen these before when we set up our data type. And the first one is the ID. So let's come into here. And where is this? Now, this is the second mistake I made when trying to set these up for the first time. I thought that they would be under the action outputs. But because we're in a callback, they're passed in as an action parameter. So you can see that right here. That's what you want. These are the chunks that you'll be processing. Okay, so now when we open this up, up, we can see that we've got some new options. And you can see we've got a bunch of these server sent event things going on. What's that? Well, this is just the protocol that streaming uses. You may have heard of other real-time protocols like WebSockets. Well, the other major one is server sent events. And these different fields right here are just part of the standard server sent event API. And you can look at the documentation here. But for this demo, we don't need to do any of these here because we already parsed this response. So we want it as the data type we already parsed. As the data type doesn't mean we're setting up the parsing here. We're saying reference the parsing that we already set up. So we can come in here now. And remember, we're looking for the ID. So we want to grab a data structure field out of our response. And there it is. Wonderful. Let's close that up and go to our next one, which is our role. Same thing here. It's coming in as an action parameter. We want our already parsed data type data structure field. And this will be inside our choices here and our choices list has one object and we just want the first object so we can grab item at index and we want the first one and we get another data structure field here because remember we have nested data structures that we set up and this one is inside delta once again our third level deep of parsing and finally we've got role beautiful next we've got our messages so we can come in here same thing as before data type data structure field choices we're gonna map these list items here we want a data structure field out of there it's in delta data structure field, and finally the content. Confirm and confirm. Finally, we just need a created ad here. And for this, we'll just grab from our global properties for now, current, great. 
Beautiful and confirm. All right, so this branch of our logic is ready. That is, if this is a new stream of chunks, we are creating that message as object and adding it to our app state variable. Now let's deal with processing each subsequent one. So what do we want to do here? Well, we just want to add the messages out of each one of those chunks to that list in the object we created right here. So we're just updating an app state variable. Simple. All right, app state. Let's update app state that one right there. And we want to update an item at index. And we want to just grab the last one that was created. And to do that, I've already set up a function right here for the last list of messages. This just returns the index of the last list in our list of messages. So we just need to pass it that list. That's our app state variable. And there it is. Beautiful. What update type is it? Well, we just want to update a field because remember, we're adding the latest message chunk. So we just want to update one field. What field is it? Oh, it's just those messages right there. And we don't want to set the value. We just want to add to that list. And what do we want to add? Well, we want to add the content from the chunk that's coming in. So data structure field, choices, item and index, first item, data structure field, delta, data structure field, and finally content. Beautiful. All right, so this is ready to test. So let's go do that. All right, so let's just say hi. Beautiful, streaming is set up. But let's make this a little bit better. Let's see if we can fade in these words as they come in and not abruptly appear. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go into these chat bubbles component right here, double click in and go into my first item right here, come into the animation tab and say on page load, I want to fade in and let's just give it something like 500 milliseconds. Let's test that out. All right, and let's say, tell me about flutter flow in one paragraph. Beautiful. And that's streaming and Flutterflow. Drop any questions you have in the comments and we'll see you in the next video.